Good morning, everyone. So good to be here with you. I'm sorry, I'm still fixing the camera a little bit. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you and um, in my Facebook Live. This is, I'm going to call them episodes. This is episode nine. This is the ninth one I've done this year. And for those of you who have connected with me before, thank you for coming back. And for those of you who are new to my work, my name is Lisa Espinosa. I am a spiritual career coach and the author of the book, Answering Your Inner Calling. And my focus in everything I do is to help you, to help my clients, my students, just anyone who connects with my work, to align with their soul so that you can share your soul's medicine in the most authentic, beautiful way. So uh, before we move forward, let's tune in, all right? So, and, and by the way, I know many of you see the recording and aren't here live, so I'm welcoming all of you, all of you who are here live, and those of you who will catch the recording later on. I'm just so honored that you're here present. So let's go ahead and tune in. And I'm just gonna close my eyes, bring the palms of my hands together in front of my heart, and you can do the same. And I just welcome my higher self, my soul, and I welcome all of your souls, your higher self, your beautiful spiritual teachers and guides. And I ask that our circle be surrounded in love and light and blessings and grace, and that whoever is meant to connect with this recording, with this gathering, with this offering, that they be here. So with great gratitude and love, we bow to each other and to our own heart. And we begin with a namaste. Namaste, everyone. All right, everyone, namaste. Hi, Katie and Mikasia. It's so nice to open my eyes and see <laughs> names pop up. So uh, today, as you know, I talked about April being all about renewal and rebirth and resurrection. And last time I talked about turning the poison into nectar, right? We focused on whatever the poison is, whatever the wound was, is that you were working on to really convert it into nectar through self-compassion. So if you didn't see that video, you know, you can go on my Facebook page and watch that. Hi, Macasia. Today, it's, it might seem like almost the opposite, but today, the focus of today's call, today's Facebook Live, is embracing your bigness, embracing your light. So what happens, it's so interesting that there's this dance between, yes, looking at our wounds, noticing what they are, working on transmuting them, working on loving them and having self-compassion for them. But it's so easy to stay stuck there. It's really easy to stay focused on the wound. And I know for me, because I've worked through healing so much trauma and wounds and burdens, it's I can really easily focus on that. And I wanna share with you, I was in North Carolina last week and it was so, it's so good to get away sometimes, right? You just get to connect in a different way with your soul. And I had a really powerful healing session with a long time shaman healer that I've been working with for about seven years. And as I was doing my, my, as we were, I was on the table and she was doing the session, what really came forward for my soul was that it was time to really focus on my bigness, on my light, that I had already done so much work on the wound and not that it's over, you know, that's an ongoing process, but that right now the emphasis, the focus was me embracing my light, focusing on all of um, the medicine that I have developed over the years. So this is the same for you. So this is today, you know, the invitation for you is yes, I know you are aware of your wounds and we're not going to repress them or exile them. But today, the focus, right, rebirth, resurrection, renewal, is to embrace, embody, really tune in and focus on your light, your medicine, 
your courage, your blessings, all the growth that you have done. And think about it, we're in spring, right? And and we're gonna, summer is gonna come. So this is the season of coming out, of blooming, of being seen. And before anybody else can see us, we have to see ourselves, right? We have to see our light, our love and our courage, our nectar, our medicine. So good morning, Elizabeth. So today, this is the invitation, is to acknowledge that there is the wound and know that it is surrounded in so much love, but bring your focus to your bigness, to your light, to your love. Even if you're thinking um, that the wound is what seems bigger, the reality is that as we step into our light, as we embody it more and more, the wound can walk along with us and we can love it and we can notice it, but it doesn't have to always take our full attention. This is different than repressing or pretending it's not there. So I'm not talking about, no, no, I'm not gonna look at my wound. I'm just gonna pretend everything's okay. That's not what this is about. It's of course we acknowledge, okay, there are my wounds, there are my burdens. I'm sending them love. I've done a lot of work on them and I will continue to do work on them. And they're actually part of what allow me to connect to other people with compassion and love. And that is not all of who I am. The bigger aspect of me is this healed, whole, beautiful light that I am. And that's going to be my focus. And this question, I want you to, I invite you to to practice asking yourself this question like what would my soul do and you can ask yourself this when you're considering big decisions but really I'm talking about like every day you know how would my soul be right now what would my soul do what would my soul say how would my soul um, answer this invitation that's coming to me and remembering that your soul is infinitely loving and compassionate and courageous and expansive and evolved and light and joyful and all of those things, all of those beautiful things that we think we want, we have already. That's the thing we have already. And when I was in this session, when this woman was, you know, working on my energy and I was inside connecting with my soul and my spiritual teachers and guides, that's what they were reminding me of. They were saying, Lisa, you have worked on your wound. You know your wound inside out. You will continue that work. We're not worried that you're going to ignore the wound. But we want you to embrace your light. We want you to embrace your bigness, to feel it and take up space. So this is what we're talking about. You know, it's like you really having the self-love, the self-awareness, the trust in yourself that you can take up space that you can be seen right now, not when you fix the wound and everything's okay. Like in this moment, it is okay. In this moment, you're perfect and divine. And so that is the, and I want to say it really is a practice because, you know, I, I received this guidance and I felt so beautiful. And then of course I left the session and I really have had to come back to that because I'm so, it's so easy for me you know, we got back from North Carolina last night and this morning I was just kind of feeling a little weird <laughs> or just, and I had this judgment like, why am I not feeling better? I just had a week in North Carolina and I was like, wait, there I am. You know, I was going to start to analyze all that was going on inside and I remembered the guidance like, no, wait, connect with my light. You know, what would my soul in this moment say to me? And my soul just said, just embrace what is, you know, like um, re remember how much joy and courage and how far you've come. Be in this space, take up space. And I really had to stop and pause and breathe. And, and I want you to offer this to you. When you are doing this practice of embracing your bigness, your light, your love, it is an embodying practice. It is a practice of connecting with your body. So really pausing and feeling your body. It's not about escaping. Remember, your soul wants to be embodied. 
yes, our soul is embalmed by a physical body, but here on the earth plane, we signed up to embody our soul. That's the journey. We signed up to stay present, not to escape, not to float away, not to just kind of like be up in our head, but to really be in our body and let our soul really take up space inside of us. So this practice of feeling your bigness is really about feeling your soul fully fill you up. And yes, as your soul fills you up, you might feel the edges. You might feel the wounds or the fear. That's okay. Let your soul just fill that up as well. Right? And then, and I did this right before the, the Facebook Live today. I went outside and it's, if you're in Chicago, it's so beautiful today, right? And I just felt, I just you know, felt my body and then connected with my aura, right? That electromagnetic field around our body, which I see as this grid of light and just felt this grid of light just expand. That was still me, right? Still my soul and just really was like, okay, I'm taking up space. I'm really letting myself feel my soul inside of me, really letting myself embody this div divinity that I am. So that is the invitation for you today. And, and as we continue through April and go into May and, you know, you see the, the blooms, the flowers starting to open more, that's what's going to happen to us, right? Is that we are being every season, every spring, every summer, the invitation is to even more, to even bloom even more, to see ourselves as the beautiful flowers that we are and to let others see us and others benefit from your nectar from your medicine your students your clients the people you are meant to help not that you're not helping them now but there's another level you're getting invited to they're waiting for you they are there they're there and it's like as soon as we say yes to ourselves they show up so um as we get ready for the meditation today, which will be, you know, all about this, right? All about embodying your soul. I want you to, you know, take a moment right now before we begin. And wherever you are at home, your office, hopefully you can, it's, it's okay for you to pause. And, and remember the, if it's not, cause I know sometimes people catch this at work, this is recorded, so you can see it again later. Um, but I want you to start to pause right in this moment. And really let yourself just settle into your body. Really let yourself, almost like a feather that's coming down, 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 down into your womb, your pelvis. Or like a, a beautiful rock, a stone that's dropping down into the water, right? Coming down until it reaches the floor of the creek or the river. I want you to feel that, that just like dropping into your womb. And when I say womb, please know that men and women and non-binary individuals, we all have a womb. So this is beyond gender. Letting that all drop. And as you do this, you know, I'm really, I'm being guided to name if you've had trauma, physical trauma. It can be scary to connect with your body in such a deep way. And I know I've had physical trauma and sexual trauma. And so it, it took a while for, you know, I was all about like, oh, let me just float away from my body, transcend my body, because that felt safer. But now we're being invited to really come into the body. So as you do this, have compassion for any parts of you uh, if they have trauma, whether you know what it is or not. Don't, you know, don't judge it. Just notice it. But let yourself drop into your pelvis, your womb. And take some nice breaths. notice if there's any movement as your soul takes up space inside of you 
Is there any movement you need to do? You might need to move your shoulders. You might need to rock a little bit. You might need to settle in your seat a little more. You're making space for your soul to take up space inside of you. And it is a practice. And remember that your soul is so safe. Your soul loves you unconditionally, has no judgment, is never impatient, and is so delighted that you are in this moment saying yes to it taking up space inside of you. So as you feel your soul this way, I invite you to bring your left hand over your heart center and then bringing your right hand over your navel, your womb. Relaxing your shoulders. And again, taking these nice breaths as you, again, you're just having this practice of letting your soul fully be embodied by you. So as you breathe in and out, and if it helps to close your eyes, you can, or you can just look at my face, just look into my eyes, if that helps. But as you breathe in and out, you're feeling your soul take up space. You're saying, yes, yes. You can take up space. You can fill me up. And you're saying yes to embracing your bigness, embracing your light, embracing your medicine. Embracing your courage. Embracing all of the initiations you've gone through. Embracing your divinity. And you acknowledge the wounds, the burdens, you can see them, you can send them love and still connect and focus on your bigness, your wholeness. And in this space, I invite you to connect with your bolt your beautiful golden grid of light. So seeing it, and you can even open your arms up as I'm doing, just kind of feeling this expansion outside your physical body. Seeing this beautiful golden grid of light around you. And continuing to breathe mindfully as you feel, and it's okay to use your imagination, feel that golden grid that surrounds you. Feel your soul's light circulating through that grid. You are saying yes to your soul, fully taking up space inside of you. So as you feel this golden grid around you, and again, it's okay to use your imagination. I invite you to call on your your team, your spiritual team of ascended masters, guardian angels, whoever you connect with. 
or whether it could be Kuan Yin or Green Tara or Mother Mary or Jesus or Krishna, Babaji, whatever being of love and light comes to you in this moment, might be more than one, just invite your team of spiritual helpers and guides to stand and bear witness and add their vibration to this practice. Because these beings of love and light, their vibration is so high that when they are, when we invite them to be with us, we can expand even more. So I just feel, you know, this morning really felt Mother Mary and I've got her here and then I pulled Mother Mary on one of my cards. So I feel her energy just standing here with me, with all of us. And this is beyond religion. I'm not connecting to one specific religion. This is divine, the divine mother. And just feeling how she is holding us here, blessing us and reminding us that yes, that it is time to fully embody our soul embody our divinity our growth our light to trust that our wounds are getting work done we don't need to spend so much time focusing analyzing the wound come back to your light that's what she is saying so let's ask i will guide you to ask your soul a few questions and you can bring your hands over to your heart center. Still staying with that connection to your womb, your pelvis. Closing your eyes if that helps. Or you can just focus. Focus on me. Focus on my hands, on my eyes. The question, beautiful soul. Beautiful soul, how are you guiding me to share my light more fully this week? Ask that beautiful soul, how are you guiding me to share my, my light more fully this week? And how are you guiding me to share my light more fully this week. Know that your soul always answers. Even if you don't hear the answer now, know that it will come. You will become aware of it at the perfect time. Next question, beautiful. So where are you guiding me to take up more space in my life? Where in my life are you guiding me to take up more space? Where in my life are you guiding me to take up more space? And as I say that, I feel Mother Mary, the Divine Mother saying, just reassuring you that you are safe as you take up more space. Any fears of persecution, of being shamed or ridiculed or hurt for being seen, for speaking your truth. She sends you healing in this moment so that you feel safe to take up that space. And final question. Beautiful soul. Show me a symbol. Show me a symbol that represents what I am bringing to the world. Okay, I'm beautiful. So show me a symbol that represents what I am bringing to the world. Can okay, show me a symbol that represents what I am bringing to the world. And we ask your soul to show you the symbol, bring it into your heart and show it to you in nature, show it to you today outside, validation of this symbol. So thanking your soul. 
Again, taking some nice breaths as you rest your hands and kind of feel that your soul taking up so much space inside of you. And let's do, let's end with that mudra of presence that I've taught many of you. And if you haven't seen me do it before, that's okay. We'll do it together. And I'm in a couch here, so it's a little harder for me, but left hand on your knee or your womb. And the right hand, you're bringing up, bringing it down. And as you do this, I really want you to have that intention of you are saying yes to your soul fully filling you up and what you say inside is I am present I am here as you say that it's not the ego that's saying I am present I am here it's your beautiful soul I am present I am here so let's do that together we bring our hands together we Close the meditation as we bow to each other and ourselves. Thank you, everyone. And I see Maria and Patricia and Lorenza. So good to see you. So, yeah, I am present. I am here. As you move forward in your day, your week, whether you got the answers right now, know that the answers are there. How are you meant to share your light, your soul's light, even more fully? And I want you to remember, I'm hearing this, this doesn't mean how do you, I work even more and get more depleted. That's not what this is about. Sharing your soul medicine fills you up. Sharing your soul's medicine doesn't even feel like work because it is so, sharing your soul medicine is meant to feel wonderful and fulfilling, not just to the people you're, or animals or crystals that you're working with, but to you. So when you ask that question, how am I meant to share my light more fully this week? This is not about, oh gosh, now what other things am I supposed to do? I'm going to get so depleted. No, 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 no. If you're getting depleted, you're not sharing your soul's medicine. You're back in rescuer mode. So remember that. And that is not said in judgment. I do that all the time. We have this addiction to suffering that we're all working on healing. So if you find yourself this week caught up in, depletion and rescuing and oh my gosh here I am again that's not your soul's medicine come back come back to I am present I am here beautiful soul remind me how do I share my soul's medicine and sometimes sharing your soul's medicine is saying no sometimes sharing your soul's medicine is saying I love you but I've got to take care of me that sometimes is that's one of the hardest things but I'm really feeling guided to name that so I want to pull two cards for you and share a couple of things that I have them written here because I'll forget. First of all, if you are not a private client already, which if you are, I love all of you, of course, uh, and you're feeling like, I would love to have a mentor by my side or at least explore that possibility, go to my website, lisaespinosa.net. That's L-I-S-A, all S's, L-I-S-A-E-S-P-I-N-O-S-A.net. Go to the Start Here tab. And you can um, sign up for a free breakthrough session. We will talk about where you are, where you want to be, how I could possibly help you. Phone, Skype, in person. I have some openings in May and June, so I would love to see you. Don't hesitate. If you're feeling that guidance, don't hesitate. Have the courage to schedule that and to at least explore it. If you're serious, if you feel like, I, I feel that calling. And you're welcome, Katie. A couple of other things that are that are happening. I'm so excited. So, so flow for the healer. You know, I do it once a month. And I actually, for various reasons, don't think I will do one in May and June. So if you want to do, if you haven't come or if you have come, there's three spots left at Lighthouse Yoga. This, The focus of this month is going to be renewing your soul's medicine. Renewing your soul's medicine. Your soul's medicine can become stagnant. So renewal of the soul's medicine at Lighthouse Yoga in Beverly. Just go to their website. Uh, I think it's under Sunday special or something. There's three spots left. So I would love to see you. Also, I have it here. Oh, retreat, May 3rd. You know I have a special rate, $111 um, for Bloom Boldly and Beautifully. This is like May. Come out, 10 to 4. We are going to be... 
I'm so excited and I'm being so prepared by all my spiritual teachers, all of your spiritual teachers. Everybody's like preparing me to facilitate this beautiful gathering. Friday, May 3rd, there's still a few spots left. 10 to 4 includes a delicious lunch. And I'm and I'm gonna do I'm gonna be doing a Reiki attunement there too. So I'm I'm super excited. And just for you to know, if you've never been to a retreat, any retreat, but any of my retreats, everyone who comes honestly is so lovely and beautiful and sweet and tender and going through their own initiations and growth. It, there's nothing to be intimidated by. So I just want you to reassure you, you will be in a safe space. You're not gonna be put on the spot. It's, it is a safe space for you to connect with your soul in a deeper way and connect with kindred spirits who are all on this similar journey with you and connect with nature and receive blessings and gifts and heal and all these amazing things. So uh, May 10th, I'm doing a special Mother's Day, whether you're a mother of his children or just a mother of the world, Beverly Yoga Center, May 10th. An evening of chanting. I'm so excited. I won't just be chanting, we will move, but we will be connecting with the Divine Mother and mother receiving mothering yourself so that you can go out and give in a fuller way. And my reading, oh my gosh, May 7th. I'm so, gosh, I know I've said this many times, but birthing the priestess within. I'm gonna start sharing so many more teachings. I will be sharing teachings in the retreat as well. And last month we had to reschedule for different reasons. So May 7th, I would love to see you at the center for my first book reading of Birthing the Priestess Within. I'm excited and a little scared, but I would love to see you. So, all right. And if you're ever um, sign up for my newsletter, because that's how I share all my things. But also if you go to my website on the events page, I'm really trying to keep those updated so you can see all the events that are happening. All right. Okay, I just want to give you a sneak peek in June. I'm just so excited. I am doing a special Reiki meditation class in the forest. I am very excited. So just so you know, I think it's June 14th. Start saving the date. I'll be sharing more details. Okay, so keepers of the light, keepers of the light. These are these beautiful ascended masters, spiritual teachers that are helping you share your light. That's their job to help you share your light. So let's ask, who is with you this week? Who is helping you? And I just want to say, I think Mother Mary is one of them because she's who I picked this morning, who I picked as my keeper of the light. But I feel like she's with you too. All right. Hello, Monica. All right. So let's see who is with you. Here we go. Oh, love it. Ganesh. Lord Ganesh, infinite abundance. Obstacles are being removed. Spiritual support and connections are increasing. OMG, Ganesh, he is like remover of obstacles. So anything that you have felt, oh, I want to share my light. I want to do this, but this is in the way. Ganesh, here he is. He's saying, nope. You know, he's saying, I am removing the obstacles, internal, external and bringing abundance so wherever you're feeling scarcity and lack i'm so excited ganesh i love ganesh all right and then one more and ganesh he's reminding me that he dances he is this like remover of obstacles but in such a light-hearted way so that's what i love about ganesh that he comes in and he's like all right i'm removing the obstacles but it's going to be, you're just going to be dancing and having fun as this happens. It's not going to be this like, oh my gosh, that was a huge painful release. It's going to be like, whoo, dancing. I always see Ganesh like dancing away the obstacles. Like he's dancing like, Doof, that's gone, that's gone. So that's what we're talking about. Oh my gosh, I have two Ganeshes on my altar. Okay. Sacred Traveler, what message for these beautiful souls who are here live and watching the recording? Who will watch the recording? this one narrow pathway and this is thread thoughtfully so I want to tell you about this this card is all about stay on your path don't get distracted by the drama or all the other stuff 
Remember we said today, it's like focus on your bigness, focus on your light. Don't get distracted by other people's stuff. Don't get distracted by like, oh, there's that wound again. Just notice it, love it, and keep. It's like really saying, just be mindful, just stay on your path. It's all you need to do, just stay on the path, stay present. When you feel yourself doing that, come back to, I am present, I am here. All right, so look at this. You got Ganesh. He's walking in front of you, clearing your path, dancing and so joyful. And then your soul is saying, just, just stay on that path. Don't get distracted by other people's drama, our own drama. Nope. We're just staying on that path. I'm so excited. This is going to be an awesome week. <laughs> all right, everyone. I love all of you. And it's always such a joy to connect with you. I will be back next Friday for uh, episode number 10 of 2019 of these Facebook Lives. And, uh, and I hope I get to see you in person in all of these offerings that are coming up. You know, I'm so, uh, I would love to see you. It's lovely to connect virtually and it's also so special to connect in person. So I would love to see you at any of these. Bye everyone, thank you for being here.